Hey everyone, Steven here, and in this video, I'm gonna take a deep dive into the retro game emulation performance and capabilities of the Raspberry Pi 5 using Botticera to learn just once and for all how capable the Pi 5 actually is and help you decide if the Pi 5 is right for your emulation needs. So to start off, I'll start by clearing up some easy stuff. Atari, Nintendo Entertainment System, Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, Neo Geo, TurboGrafx-16, pretty much any main game, and really anything from this era of early 90s games and earlier are gonna run perfectly on the Pi 5. And really that's to be expected. We've been able to emulate most of these systems pretty well on Pis all the way back to the Pi 3 and even earlier. And after testing, I can confirm that emulation is just as good, if not better on the Pi 5 than it was on its predecessors. If these are the systems that you're looking to emulate, then the Pi 5 will confidently meet your needs. But what more can we do with it and how far can we push things? Starting things out with the Sega Saturn and its flagship game, Knights. While the 3D graphics definitely are showing their age and the controllers aren't exactly buttery smooth compared to modern standards, Knights plays just as well as it did on the original hardware. No slowdowns, no stutters what to speak of. So trying something a little bit different, Radiant Silver Gun, which is a great entry to the scrolling shooter genre, and this game actually holds up really well. This genre of games usually does a great job of testing emulators because when things start heating up, the sheer amount of rendered objects on the screen will usually highlight any deficiencies with the emulation platform. But as you can see here, this game plays buttery smooth even when things start to get crowded on screen. The Pi 5 gets an A plus for Sega Saturn emulation. Next up, the original PlayStation, and we're playing Gran Turismo 2. I don't have any sound playing as this gameplay has a lot of licensed music, so I'm just gonna avoid that. But I do have to say that even with these chunky pixels, the gameplay in this game actually really holds up well, and it's very playable by today's standards. That's one of the fun things about playing these games from the past is you really get to feel which games actually really nailed gameplay and are true classics that are worth a replay and which games are more of technical demos. And Gran Turismo 2 seems to have nailed both and it's a true classic. The Raspberry Pi 5 is handling this game with ease, locking in the game's native 30 frames per second with no issues. Up next, we'll be playing the original Tomb Raider on PlayStation. And unlike Gran Turismo 2, this game <laughs> really didn't nail the gameplay. It was more of a technical demo. The controls are numb, unresponsive, and really unpredictable. I really can't recommend playing through this game today, but in terms of emulation quality on the Pi 5, it's doing great. No performance issues whatsoever here, and the Pi 5 gets an A plus for original PlayStation emulation. Up next is the Sega Dreamcast, a system that I really feel was underrated back in its day. And we're starting things off with Jet Set Radio. I love the visual styling of this game, and it really comes back from a time when rollerblading and hypercolors were really a cool thing. And this game really leaned into it. Though, now I guess Rollerblade is coming back, and Hypercolors are coming back, and all the stylings of the 90s are coming back, so who knows, maybe we'll get a new Jet Set Radio game. This game is running great at the original resolution, but let's crank things up a bit to see if the Pi 5 can handle increasing the render resolution to 1080p from the original 480p. You can do this easily for the Sega Dreamcast by hitting the hotkey plus A on your controller, changing the render resolution settings, and then going straight back into the game. And I'm surprised to say that everything here looks great at 1080p. I didn't really expect the Pi 5's little GPU to be this good on this game, but the folks over at Raspberry Pi did a really great job bumping up the GPU horsepower over that of the Pi 4. Next we'll try a second game on the Dreamcast, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. And again, the Pi 5 is handling this with ease. The gameplay is smooth, controls are responsive, what's not to love here? The Pi 5 gets an A plus for Sega Dreamcast emulation. So the Pi 5 is off to a strong start being able to confidently emulate the Sega Saturn, PlayStation 1, and Dreamcast upscaled to 1080p. But let's see how much further the Pi 5 can take things with our next system, the N64. And this is a system that's been giving Raspberry Pis a run for their money. Starting things off with Super Mario 64, the N64's iconic launch title. And here you can see we're locked into the original 30 frames per second, so things are looking pretty good. And I was playing around quite a bit trying to get this game to stutter, but not a single frame rate dip, which is not something that I could have said for the Pi 4. Next up, we'll be testing Mario Kart 64. And once again, we're locked in at the native 30 frames per second, and it's playing really smooth. 
Next up is F-Zero, one of the few titles that played at 60 frames per second on the N64, and here again, the Pi-5 is nailing it. Majora's Mask plays great too. Star Fox 64 playing great. Every once in a while in Star Fox, I notice some small jitters in frame rates, but even still, at least to me, this is a really playable experience and typically only happened during cutscenes. Smash Brothers had a similar experience, mostly smooth with a couple of dips here and there, but all in all, I had a great time playing Smash Brothers on the Pi 5. Things are looking great, but we're starting to see some subtle flaws in the emulation, so we'll try a few more titles. Clay Fighter, Yoshi Story, and Excite Bike were all games that had major frame rate dips and crossed over into the unplayable territory for me. So it's a bit of a mixed bag here for N64, but all in all, it's a much improved upon experience over the Pi 4, but not quite perfect. So if you're looking for N64 emulation, the Pi 5 will have you covered for a lot of games, just not everything. And with that said, the Pi-5 gets a B- for N64 emulation. Up next is the GameCube, and to my surprise, one of my test games, 18-wheeler, ran really well, and I'd be happy playing through this game on the 5. I tried upscaling the resolution too, and while it worked pretty well, it was a little bit jittery, and just enough to cause some audio issues, so I think I'd stick to native resolution here. And trying another game, Metroid Prime, Sadly, I can't say this game was quite as playable, and that's kind of going to be your story for GameCube. You're going to find some games that'll play, you'll find some games that don't play quite as well, you can pretty much launch any title, but again, don't expect a great experience. So overall for the GameCube, I'll give the Pi 5 a C-. PSP is up next, and here I am playing God of War, one of the more demanding PSP titles, and it plays great running in its native resolution. There's some pretty demanding 3D content in this title, and I tried upscaling to 1080p, you can see that was just a little too ambitious for the Raspberry Pi 5, but bringing it down to 2x resolution, we're getting a locked 45 to 50 frames per second, which isn't half bad. With this ability to upscale to reasonable resolutions, I'm really happy with the performance here, solid B performance. Lastly, I'm trying the Nintendo Wii to see just what we can do. First game up, New Super Mario Brothers. While it's not the most demanding title, we're still able to play it, but the frame rates really aren't that great, so I don't really consider this a playable experience. Jumping over to Mario Kart Wii, kind of more of the same. The game plays, but it's a little slow. For me, these frame rates aren't very enjoyable to play at, so I'll give Wii emulation on the Raspberry Pi 5 a D. You might be able to get away with playing a few games here and there, it's just not the Pi 5's cup of tea. So is the Pi 5 the emulation platform for you? If you're looking to play the Atari systems, NES, Sega Genesis, Game Boy, Super Nintendo, Neo Geo, retro arcade games, and more of that era, you'll have a great time with the Pi 5. And if you're looking to play some of the early 3D systems like PS1, Saturn, or Dreamcast, the Pi 5's got you covered. If you're looking to play N64 games, you're mostly going to be covered with the Pi 5. Just don't expect every title to play perfectly, but most of the top games are going to play great. For playing anything more recent, you're better off with a system with a little bit more power, like a used desktop PC or a mini PC. But for a complete Pi 5 setup starting for as little as $75, there really aren't that many other options out there that'll do this well for this money. And for me, the Raspberry Pi 5 plays a lot of what I'm interested in playing. But the Pi 5 has one more thing going for it, and that's its form factor, which is a total blank slate, allowing you to make the outside into exactly how you want it. And for me, that's pretty special. So what do you think? Is the Pi 5 capable of meeting your retro gaming needs? Let me know in the comments below. And with that, that does it for this video. Be sure to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more deep dives into the capabilities of other retro gaming platforms. Thanks for watching. See you next time.